Welcome to Herne Bay High School's YouTube channel for revision for the students. So, what's it all about? What we decided to do was we to put something together for parents to enable them to support their children with revision over the next forthcoming four weeks up until their PPEs and then, then for following that onto their um, final exams. So what you're going to find is, is a, a collection of different um, videos from different members of the department, giving you tips on how to answer the paper and giving you tips on what they need to be able to do for particular revision topics. Why are we having these, th these videos? So the YouTube channel is designed to support your child over the forthcoming exams. From the 30th of January right up until the 14th of February, your child will have a di different exam for each of their subjects. What these videos will hopefully do is give them some guidance on how to revise. That is their last opportunity before their summer final exams. So what we, after, the, after the exams, what will happen is we will then put up a different group of videos for each subject on different topical content. So look out for our Facebook, our Twitter, and show my homework for those particular videos. In addition to that, what we're also going to do is, to, which will go out via PDF via the school email, so if you haven't got your email up to date, please update it, but via the school email, we will give you a work booklet which will support you with temp revision templates as alongside um, a revision planner. Hi Year 11, today I'm going to talk to you about the GCSE English language exams. Let's start by talking about what's on the papers. There are two GCSE language papers. The first is a non-fiction paper and the second is a fiction paper. They are both two hours long and they are each worth 50% of your overall grade. Though the papers will focus on different extracts, the question structure is very similar. Let's talk about the writing section of the exam. Each exam has a section B which tests your writing skills, both in terms of how interesting it is and how accurate it is. It's a good idea to do this question first because it is worth the most number of marks, 40 marks out of 80 to be exact. You should spend 45 minutes on this question, 10 minutes planning your response, 30 minutes writing and 5 minutes checking. Remember you only need to answer one question out of the two that are on the paper, so pick the one you feel most confident in answering. Now let's talk about the reading section of the paper. The reading section on both papers, section A, has four separate questions that you need to answer. You must answer all of the questions in section A and together they are worth a total of 40 marks out of 80. The questions in section A will tell you which part of each extract to look at. Please follow these instructions carefully. Let's start by talking about question one. Now this question is only worth four marks. It's usually subdivided into parts. You may be asked to find a quote, to explain uh, what you understand by a particular quote, uh, or to define a word. Question one is really testing you on how well you have understood that part of the text or the text as a whole. You should spend approximately five minutes on this question. Now let's talk about question two. Question two is the only question on the reading section which is different on both papers. It is worth six marks though on both papers and you should spend approximately 10 minutes on this question. On paper one you will be asked to make comparisons between the two given extracts providing quotations as evidence. You should aim to make at least three different comparisons um, and provide two quotes for each comparison. On paper two this is slightly different. Paper two, you will be asked to analyse the language and structure of the text. This is very similar to question three. You will be expected to use quotation, to analyse both language and structure, and to use subject terminology in your answer. Question three. This question is worth 12 marks and you should aim to spend approximately 20 minutes on this question. Question three on both of the papers will ask you about the language and structure and will direct you to a specific part of the text only comment on the language and structure from that part of the text which has been specified. Again, you have to make sure you analyse both language and structure equally, that you use quotations and that you use subject terminology in your answer. Finally, question four, the last question of the four in section A. Now question four is worth 18 marks and you should aim to spend approximately 30 minutes on this question. The marks for this question are awarded for two skills. You get up to six marks for making comparisons and you get up to 12 marks for evaluation. Evaluation simply means making a judgment. You need to ensure you have explained which text is most effective and why, relating it to the steer of the question.
Finally, let's talk about how you can revise for English language. English can seem like a difficult subject to revise for, especially as the English language exam is full of unseen texts. However, here are some helpful strategies. The first thing I would recommend is make sure you read regularly at school and at home. This can be newspapers, magazines, blogs, novels. Um, you could even start jotting down what language and structural features you can spot in the text that you read. The next thing I would say is please learn your key words. This will help you with identifying and using subject terminology in your answers. Please also make sure you learn your essay plans and your sentence stems for each question on the reading paper. This will really help you with question two, three and four. The next thing you can do is get some past papers and start practicing individual questions or the whole paper if you like. You could also spend time redrafting previous papers and previous answers that you've written either for homework or in class. Learning new and interesting vocabulary can be another important thing that you can do in preparation for these exams, as well as revising the rules of punctuation for the writing section. Go through all of your TFDs and have a go at applying them to a new piece of work or a redraft. Those are the ways that you can revise for English language. Right, just a final message from me, Year 11, about revising for English. You have plenty of practice questions in your course books and all of the teachers would be happy to give you feedback. There are many resources on Student Share and on the Student Revision Portal, so make sure you use them. If you do get stuck, always ask your English teacher for advice. Happy revising. Hello, my name is Mr Sandals and I'm a maths teacher here at Herne Bay High. I would like to take this opportunity to go through some tips that you may find useful to help support your child when revising and preparing for GCSE mathematics. The main thing that a student can do to prepare for their GCSE exam is to practice many exam style questions. Reading notes alone doesn't really suit mathematics. All students will have been sent home a list of topics they need to revise. I would suggest they start by crossing off the topics they have already covered or confident with in class or at home. They should then break down what is left into manageable chunks, trying to make sure that they cover everything by the end of May. Revising little and often is far more effective than revising all in one go. Students should try and find as many exam style questions as possible. They can find examples of these in their exercise books. They can ask their teacher for any additional questions that they require. Or you can find a wealth of questions and resources online at websites such as Mr Barton Maths. You can find this at www.mrbartonmaths.com. Mr Barton Maths is particularly useful as not only does it provide lots of exam style questions, but videos and mark schemes also. Mark schemes are massively important when coming to revising because knowing what you, the examiners are looking for and for you to be able to mark your own work is going to help you a lot. After students have practiced on questions, they should then mark their answers or ask their teacher to look at them. If they have got them correct, they can cross it off their revision list. If, however, they are still getting them wrong, it's really important that they seek additional help rather than just leaving it. We offer a Year 11 session on a Thursday after school in Maths Room 17 where students can get help. We also offer sessions every lunchtime in Maths Room 17. Every maths teacher in the department wants your child to do well. So if they cannot attend their sessions, please do encourage them to find us at any other time and we will be happy to help. Hi, I'm going to go through some support materials available for your child to support them with their upcoming science exams. So first of all, students, if they have the revision guide, um, they will have on the inside cover a list of the topics that will be in the exam. For the upcoming PPEs, we're just going to be doing paper two. So we can see biology paper two, exactly which sections in the revision guide they need to be working from. So students should be able to identify exactly what they need to be revising. If they haven't got a copy of the revision guide, on the student portal, there is a list there with specific links to websites such as BBC Bite Sites. So there is a support available there if they haven't got the revision guides. Um, on the student portal as well, there is a section where it has past papers where they can practice. There are past papers for combined science, 
and separate sciences um, for each biology, chemistry and physics. There are also specific links to resources to help them. So that includes BBC Bite Size, Seneca and um, Physics and Maths Tutor. So I know that doesn't quite sound like that's for all subjects, but basically this website has lots and lots of practice questions for students to do, and there are also the mark schemes for them to then mark their own answers. Obviously, if students want any support, they are more than welcome to answer the questions and then bring those in to school and their teacher will mark them as well. Obviously, there is also the workbook that some students will have bought that accompanies the revision guide. One of my top tips for this would be for the students to actually not write in the workbook. If they write their answer on a piece of paper, then they can go back and they can try that same question several weeks later. So it gives them more than one chance to actually go and test their knowledge rather than them having the answer written in front of them. Um, also, obviously, to support students, on that student portal, there is a folder which is labelled Core Practicals. As you may be aware, um, all students have to complete a set of core practicals for biology, chemistry and physics. Now, we don't assess them in class on these practicals anymore. What happens is they will get questions on the exam, in the exam sorry, on those questions. Therefore, they really need to know those core practicals in depth um, and be able to explain what they did. So there are nice PowerPoints on there with videos to remind them as well as practice questions. We also have, as we have always done, offered revision sessions within the department. Those revision sessions are on a Monday. Thursday and Friday lunchtime, as well as Tuesdays and Thursdays after school. A revision timetable has been published and what we have done is identified specific topics that will be revised on specific dates. Therefore, if students actually are really confident with ionic bonding, then they don't need to go to the ionic bonding revision session but perhaps they're not very good at the periodic table. So they can see, oh, okay, on this date, there is a revision session on the periodic table. So as a conversation with teachers and students, they should have identified the revision sessions that they will be attending. Obviously, if you could support your child in attending those revision sessions when needed, that would be fantastic. Really, um, there are lots of things there to support students, but if they have any questions, then please tell them to speak to their teacher about um, whatever it is they need support with. We also have a, a keep calm and study um, support session also on a Thursday afternoon, which is purely just to help the students with anything that they're finding difficult in the run up to the exams. Otherwise, the students just need to make sure that they're planning their revision thoroughly and practicing questions. Best of luck.